after the rigged events that were this year's Guardian Games, and if you don't believe me that they were rigged, every single class had one entire straight week of winning by a landslide, just to have the Hunters, which it was their turn, win anyway, even though they haven't been in the lead since day 7 of 21. But regardless, aside from the raid games, I wanted to cover a few things real quick. Obviously, Into the Light dev stream number two has happened. And I'm sure you've heard, and if you have not, I do have a video covering some of the great things that happened, including the return of many King Pinnacle weapons, as well as fan favorites of Destiny 2, some over four years old. So, on that note as well, in the Eververse store, right off the bat, that will cover this a little bit more in detail later, Eververse but there is a flashback event going on for Season of the Dawn. So if you wanted any of the Saint-14 inspired armor sets back from this battle pass, as well as one of the best finishers in the game, as well as, like I said, another ornament that is only available through the battle pass, if you like it, if you want it, go ahead and grab it while you can. It is, of course, limited time. It's just, you know... You have to buy it for silver it, currently. So, you know, getting that out of the way, of course, Destiny, as always, has returned and come back around. So, of course, there is, as always, a booster. I believe this week it is a Trials booster. But on the note of Nightfall, the current weapon this week is the Undercurrent, which is possibly made irrelevant again. Uh, I wasn't sure how relevant it was before, but if you watch the Into the Light dev stream or my video, you know that this might be no longer relevant again but aside from that this week's nightfall is dun, ba, dun, ba, ba, the heist battleground on the moon which for all intents and purposes is not that hard yet yeah, heist battleground usually means there is an overabundance of ads but the first area is pretty solid to work through it is a large area lots of enemies but lots of good cover if you know how to position yourself but there is that one room that is a big pain and the final boss of course being a void sniper with a void threat means it hurts bad so it's manageable, not so hard, it's pretty good for resources in case you want to farm it out. All three elemental shields, bearer, and unstoppable foes, you'll be fighting Scorn and Hive. Like I said, Void Threat, the usual modifiers for Grandmasters, extinct Extinction, or Extinguish, and Limited Revives, Fire Pit for Acolyte spawning Fire Pools on Defeat, Chaff for no Radar, Usual Seasonal Overcharge, as well as Strand and Solar Surge and Overcharge Sniper Rifles. So, there you go for the Nightfall. Nothing new in Gambit. And for Crucible, like I said, there's allegedly a boosted Trials thing, according to a few weekly reports. But on that note, so, uh, Supremacy is no longer here, but Mayhem has replaced it. So, if you want to have some fun in all-out warfare with uh, pretty much unbound recharges, there you go. Now, we also have Sparrow Control for our basic control PvP. Competitive is, as usual, Clash for 3v3. Collision is still in 3v3 labs, and of course, Rumble as always, with trials coming around this weekend. Now, on the front page of a few things for our weekly stuff, our weekly farming one is the Shattered Throne, which of course did get a bit of a refresh. It does drop more new loot and is infinitely farmable, and is probably one of the easier things to farm, especially the final boss can be killed in 30 seconds, relatively, but it is not much else to get from there. And on that same note as well, our weekly farming raid is the Vault of Glass, as usual. All challenges are active, all five of them, as well as Master Mode being available, strength-focused armor, but it is also the opportunity to run through in case you want any of the time-lost gear, time-lost Fatebringer, corrective measure, heads and vengeance, any of the above. If you wanted a good time-lost roll, now it's time to go for it. On that note as well, for uh, a weekly exotic mission is currently Vox Obscura, which while the season 16 rewards are worth it, I would say the dead messenger is not. It's worth picking it up in case you want just a funny gun, but from that point is not exactly worth farming. You could do better in the world of Destiny. Speaking of better, there is the Crota's End Raid that is available as always. This week is all for one, which is the Crota Challenge itself. Basically, you have to have everyone with a sword down Crota at once. The master mode focus is recovery focused armor as well, which means if you want master or adept Crota gear, you gotta do the challenge for Crota. On that note, just bouncing about throughout the world, for Neptune to keep things up in pace, the weekly mission is currently Downfall, which is the, uh, I believe, the bit where you go after the radial mast. Uh, I Don't quote me on that, though. I just... If I recall, that's what it is. Then the weekly rotation zone is the Ahimsa Park for Vex Incursion, which also means it is the annoying partition where you're getting booped by the, the dude the entire time. 
And on that note, just to keep it in pace, the Root of Nightmares raid is an eliminated torment challenge, which is first encounter. Basically, you need to have anyone uh, who's killing the tormentors have the illumination buff. Then, going backwards for Valid Disciple, we have the base information challenge, and the second encounter challenge. Then, for King's Fall, just to keep it on track, we do have the hands off challenge, which I think is War Priest challenge. Either that or Oryx. I do forget on a, well, a lot of the time, not on occasion. But then for the Deepstone Crypt, we do have the Core 4, which is Tannix Challenge. Pretty solid one, pretty easy to do if you 4-ball it and burn him. Then we also have for the Garden of Salvation, the do, 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 Link to the Chain Challenge, which I forget exactly what that does as well. But then we get to the Last Wish Raid, and it is Strength of Memory, which if I recall is Riven Challenge. Easy to do if you burn her. Then, to wrap everything up for bouncing across the world, there's of Eternity on Legend is currently Fallen Hive and Zydron for the rotation. And, to wrap it up in the Seasonal Department, our current rotation of the Coil is... Divining Hall, First Steps, Sensorium, and First Steps again in the various places I've said dozens of times already this season. They really needed more options for the Coil. And just to reiterate as well, there is no seasonal challenges being added to the list, so if you want to get access to more Bright Dust for free, there is still the Eververse store that is spitting up Bright Dust every single week, you just have to make sure to claim it. You will be able to build up quite the haul afterwards. And on that same note as well, back into oh, Eververse. Now, I mentioned there was more to the um, bit about that, I'll get into more of that in the future. But on the front page for Bright Dust, we have Gamekeeper from Season of the Witch, which while it looks white and silver, it is not in any real aspect on the armor, on the weapons more so. We also have Hazard Pay from Season of the Lost, which is a unique combo and a unique set. Does look better on the guns though. Then we also have Ghost Purple, a transmat, which is like the many transmats we see nowadays, a basic blue rarity transmat from year one that they recolored into purple. That's now we funny. also have uh, excuse me, a Mighty Multi-Tool Ornament. So if you don't know, the Mighty Multi-Tool, currently available and available to be crafted from the Presage Exotic Mission, this is a ornament that goes on it that was back from the set that it was on. It basically a alternate look. It's kind of like ornaments for legendary weapons, it's just a lot more simple. So if you want to pick that up and add it to your Callus Mini Tool, give it a different look, that is there for you, but only for this week. Then Simon Says is an emote, which I believe is your ghost doing a cute little back and forth of Simon Says, which is honestly real cute in your relationship with your ghost, but you know, that's pretty much it. You do that, and it's over. Now, I just want to read it as well when I said this won't be back. This is not available anywhere but the Bright Dust store currently, so if you want to make sure to get your hands on this or any of the other weapon ornaments that come by, whether it's from the Callus set or anything else, it is pretty limited time. So, going into the main Bright Dust store, for shaders we have Smashing Success, which if you can imagine, looks a lot like a watermelon or the Looking Hulk for, for multiple reasons. Then we also have Bioloom, which is very similarly so, a carbon fiber look, blue, green, pretty solid look, very Neo Muna, but more blue than green. Then we also have Copper Brand, which like the name suggests, makes you real copper looking, which is quite a clean look, especially for the chest plate in various places, won't lie. And we also have Reef Regalia, which, like the name suggests, makes you look like the Corsairs of... I forget her name. Uh, Queen's Wrath. Uh, I forget, I, you know, what, you know, the Queen's Wrath, you know who she is. Then for Transmats, we have the Fallen Arrival, which is you popping out of a Servitor, as well as the Reef Awoken, which is popping out of Reef... Blah, blah, blah. And the Ossified Entrance, which is the Scorpion's Tail, all the way back from Season of the Chosen, with the, what's it called, Astrology set. And into some of the big ticket items. So, we have Hacker Time, which is the one where you pull up a computer and just kind of type on it for a while until you, you know, finish it. And you just do that and break into the computer. But then, this is the other big ticket item. So, I'm not sure what the other classes have. I imagine there will be the similar gauntlets for the other classes, but it'll probably be different. But this is the armor set from uh, back during Season of Dawn that was available for Eververse. 
Now, it is available way back somewhere in the archive right here. This is the Surface set. As you can see, this is the combination right here. So if you want to complete that set for free and not have to spend money on it, it is available for Bright Dust, which is something you can do for all three classes, I imagine. I don't, Like I said, I don't know if they match up, but there okay, you go. Then for our other big ticket items, we have the Razor Scale Shell, which is a ghost shell that is, of course, very dragon-like as... And moving on, Star Racer 95, a old jump ship that looks very retro, to say the least. And then we also have the War Torn Peregrine, which is a Sparrow back from Season of the Haunted that is basically just a busted up original Sparrow. Nothing really more there. And another big ticket item is Space Time Weft, an ornament from this season for Leviathan's Breath. A very sleek looking Tron retro Neo Muna look, which... I don't know if it compares to other ornaments in my eye, but it definitely kind of beats out basic Leviathan's Breath. And lastly, as always, Daily yeah. Bread, a ghost projection that is just bread. Then wrapping everything up with the stocks of the tower, we have Banshee 44 with his usual weapon selection. And to start it off, uh, several reappearances from last week. Whispering Slab, a lightweight bow that is, you know... Uh, as I always say, quite outdated, has some nifty perks to it, but is old as hell. Then, Cartesian Coordinate. Similarly old as hell, but it is still up to date in this day and age because it actually has a few perks that keep it alive and relevant. Then, Dire Promise. Similarly so for the Crucible, old as hell, but is a very nifty performer in terms of stats and, you know, just like I said, performance. So, not bad there. Same for Cold uh, Denial. Old as hell, but it actually has a few nifty perks to kind of keep it still relevant, mostly in the Crucible crowd, though. And then lastly, we have Code Duello. Very similarly old, but it is the first of the Lasting Impression rockets. Still has some pretty solid setups, even if there are better solar and craftable rocket launchers that are also high impacts. And to wrap it all up, with the shaders available at A to 1, Genotype 0, a shader that is an old favorite, Basically a dark gray slash black carbon fiber with a nice shiny metallic orange. And then as well, we have New Pacific, New Pacific Sync Worn, which is another one of those graded armor sets made to look like a old Titan set. Uh, or Titan as in the planet, not the class. And then we also have War Cult Rain, which is another one of those faction shaders that doesn't really compare to others, but it doesn't look half bad still on its own. And with that, that is the reset update. My name is the Mad Scorpion. I thank you for watching. And like I said, the Into the Light dev stream is over. I do have a respective video covering all the important bits on that. But keep an eye out for the last dev stream next week where they will be showing, of course, more than we know because they have more to show. I will see you then.